12.18 p.m. Friday, February 26, 1993. At about 17 minutes past noon, a thunderous explosion rocked Lower Manhattan. The epicenter was the parking garage beneath the World Trade Center, where a massive eruption carved out a nearly 100-foot crater, several stories deep and several more high. Six people were killed almost instantly. Smoke and flames began filling the wound and is streaming upward into the building. Those who were trapped were soon pouring out of the building. Many were panic-stricken and covered in soot. More than a thousand people were hurt in some way, some badly with crushed limbs. As a small band of terrorists is scurried away from the scene unnoticed, the FBI and its partners began staffing up a command center and preparing to send in a team to investigate. Their instincts told them that this was terrorism. They would be tracking Islamic fundamentalists in the city for months, and they would later learn they were tantalizingly close to encountering the planners of this attack. But hunches weren't enough. What was needed was definitive proof. The terrorist would have it soon enough. The massive investigation that followed quickly uncovered a key bit of evidence. In the rubble, investigators uncovered a vehicle identification number on a piece of wreckage that seemed suspiciously obliterated. A search of crime records returned a match. The number belonged to a rented van reported stolen the day before the attack. An Islamic fundamentalist named Mohammed Salameh had rented the vehicle, and on March 4th, an FBI SWAT team arrested him as he tried in vain to get his $400 deposit back. One clue led to another, and authorities soon had in custody three more suspects, Nidal Ayad, Mahmoud Abahalima, and Ahmed Ajaj. Authorities would also find the apartment where the bomb was built and a storage locker containing dangerous chemicals, including enough cyanide gas to wipe out a town. All four men were tried, convicted, and sentenced to life. The shock wave from the attack continued to reverberate. Following the unfolding connections, the task force soon uncovered a second terrorist plot to bomb a series of New York landmarks simultaneously, including the UN building, the Holland and Lincoln tunnels, and the Federal Plaza, where the FBI office in New York is housed. The mastermind of the World Trade Center bombing was still on the run, the Youssef. Youssef was captured in Pakistan two years after the attack, returned to America and convicted along with the van driver, Ayad Ismoy. A seventh plotter, Abdul Yassin, would remain at large. It became one of the largest crime scenes in New York police history. Estimates showed property damage in excess of one half billion dollars. The sense of fear and panic in the city was palpable. We later learned from Youssef that his trade center plot was far more sinister. He wanted the bomb to topple one tower, with the collapsing debris knocking down the second. The attack turned out to be something of a deadly dress rehearsal for 9-11. With the help of Youssef's uncle, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, Al-Qaeda would later return to realize Yosef's nightmarish vision.